Hi there, um, I'm going to talk about uh, the RetroArch mod, for uh, it's the soft mod for the Yoga Flame cabinet. Um, I'm here in the UK, um, basically we don't have a great choice of cabinets, and um, we certainly don't have the spaces in that small area, so having a line of these just isn't feasible. Um, but basically, uh, this the soft mod is posted by the ADM um, on the Internet Archive, so thank you to him. Um, if you've not done the mod yet, all you've got to do is, when you get to the part where you install the cabinet APKs, just install the RetroArch APK as well. If you've already done the mod, and your screen looks like this, but without this bit, um, all you've got to do is basically plug your keyboard back in, um, have your uh, RetroArch app for Android downloaded on your SD card, and then just, just follow the procedure to add it. It's really simple. So when it's first installed, it loads up. It'll look a little something like this. Um, I'm just going to load up my config file first. These are really important, but I'll, I'll go through these at the end. Um, I know my config files work because it's got like, the Android stuff at the top, like the, the battery and stuff that we, that we don't need to see. Um, so when you first go in, um, the, the joystick's not going to work, so don't panic. With your keyboard still plugged into the USB, uh, just scroll across, uh, go to input, um, and go to port 1 settings. And then scroll down. As you get to D-pad up, as soon as you hit that, you can start working in the, in the joystick and the buttons and get it set up as you need. Um, second important feature is your hotkeys. Um, it's important you set your hotkeys up because otherwise there's no way of backing out of games without power cycling, which you can imagine is a bit of a pain. Um, so for hotkeys, first of all, enable your hotkey. And I've got mine set so the player 2 button is the hotkey. So you have to hold that before any of the hotkeys will work so you don't get any accidental um, inputs. Um, just to let you know, the only problem with this mod is RetroArch sees the control deck as one controller, so you won't be able to play two players, unfortunately. Um, if you've got a USB hub, you can plug in a wireless controller, uh, or, or wide controller, so like an 8-bit do, um, and you can set it up that way, they just won't be able to play at the cabinet with you. Okay. Um, to then get your ROMs in, all you've got to do, uh, scroll to import content, click scan directory. Now, for some reason Android 10 doesn't like seeing external SD cards, so you have to put your, your ROMs on the internal storage. Um, so all you do is um, basically when you're in the in the file system drag your ROMs into the RetroArch folder and um, there's a folder called file so just put mine in there uh, which, is, which is this one. It's empty at the moment because I took the SD card out I don't need it. Click scan this directory and it, it'll scan your ROMs automatically. Um, as long as you've got the right sort of ROMs um, it'll put them in the playlist um, and I've got two. I've got FB Neo and main because that, that's all I really need. Um, now there's enough uh, memory on board for the, those three additional cabinets and around 40 to 50 extra arcade games. Um, I've put 20 on there, but I've got some really big files like Street Fighter 3, Guru, there, 70, 80 megs a piece. Whereas, for example, something like Turtles in Time is 3 megs. So you do the maths, you can work out. If you stick to smaller games, you'll get more. Bigger games, you'll get you'll get less. But for me, that that's actually a plus because I didn't want an, an endless like, doom scrolling menu of ROMs. I just wanted games that I knew I was going to play. So having like an extra 30, 40 curated section is, is ideal for me. Um, so I'm just going to go into third strike and I'm just going to go through some of the configurations that you can do to get the most out of this. Um, as you can see there, it says game remap file loaded. So when this game first starts, um, basically the buttons won't be correct. So with the hotkeys I've got set up, I've got hold player 2 and press the live button and I'll just quit you out completely back back to RetroArch. But the one you'll need is for like the quick menu. Uh, quick menu you can do your shaders. So with me it's uh, hold player 2 and press strong punch. So in this menu you've got your save and load stage which will be handy for some certain uh, lengthy games. You've got your controls for the currently running content which is ideal because you want to get this right without wrecking all your other games. Um, just get to port one control. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It, it, it even labels what the buttons do. There's a bit of trial and error. I just keep going back and forth until you get it right. Or get your little notebook out and like I did, and you just put what what button should go where. Um, and that will once you go into uh, active remap file, it will save and load every time you boot the game up. So you've only got to do it once, which which is great. Um, I did have an issue um, where on third strike and alpha two, where he, he, for whatever reason he didn't recognise that two punch buttons or two kick buttons were being pressed at once, so it made certain moves impossible. Can't do EX moves in third strike either. So to fix this, all you've got to do, um, go over to um, settings, go to latency, and there's one here, input block timeout. Um, it, it says usually if you have issues with simultaneous button presses, so all you've got to do is change that from zero to one, and your EX moves, basically any buttons you press more than once um, simultaneously will work then. Um, Cool. Um, one last thing as well on the quick menu is you've got your shaders. This is where I set the CRT filter. Um, all you've got to do um, is scroll down to shaders. Make sure it's ticked on. Uh, get to load. GS, GLSL um, into CRT. And it's the one at the very bottom said fast CRT. This will give you accurate scan lines. Um, you don't need to use integer scanning either. So you get the full screen real estate. Properly good looking scan lines. Um, 
and once that, again, once that's saved, you can save it so it's um, a global setting, so all games will have it. Um, on games that are like horizontal, like, um, sorry, vertical, like uh, Pac-Man, uh, I don't have the uh, scan lines on because it doesn't look quite right. Uh, but obviously, that, that's up to you. Um, right, so I'll quickly just show you this, this one in, and it's very nice. So this cabinet gets really loud as well, that's on 11 and 15. So we'll go to 12, because I don't want to annoy my neighbours. So it's got a decent volume, hasn't it? Um, back to 10. Pop some coins in, let's go. Fighters ready. Engage. just those two hotkeys um, so we'll load up another game we'll look at Metal Slug um, and obviously this is a Neo Geo game <coughs> Neo Geo games run flawlessly on this um, the great thing is from that quick menu you can set the BIOS as well so I've got the Uni BIOS at the moment um, what's also great is you hold the start button for a couple of seconds and you get the dip switches so what's great with Metal Slug is you can um, have English language and red blood with typically you'd have to use the Japanese ROM or the Japanese uh, BIOS um, so that's fantastic. Um, just scroll back with um, Fierce, go to Exit, um, and it will remember that as well, so you don't have to do that every time. You might know the blood was already set to one. Um, it's really handy for Shock Troopers as well, which is another really good Neo Geo shooter, really underrated. Um, and the death animations of that are quite comical, so it's good to see them. Um, it's because you get the English language. Mission one. Um, this game I've played way too much. Um, a bit disappointed that I, that I died though, what, what a noob. Um, <clears throat> right, so um, as you can see, I've got some really good games in the Art of Fighting uh, 2, Kazuna Encounter, I've really underrated Tag Fighter, Neo Turf Masters, which is just the only golf game worth playing, um, Shock Troopers, which I mentioned before, Turtles in Time, um, in Maine we've got 1944, AVP, um, Pac Man, you've got a Pac Man, haven't you? Shinobi, Spatterhouse, um, Sunset Riders. Rest, Vendetta, WrestleFest, Zero Wing, um, so some really good games on here. Um, I'll just very quickly uh, we'll push our spot to roofs. Okay, yeah, controls are fine, Zig with the slide now, put them at all. <laughs> Actually beat this game on the cab, it's the first time I ever beat it. Um, so yeah, that was nice. 
Not that you could tell the way I'm playing at the minute, but there we go. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So the, the last thing for RetroArch is, that's really important, is uh, go to your configuration file whenever you do any changes and save the current configuration file. Um, I'd also recommend you save a new one as well, so you've got a separate file. Um, reason being is, I was playing the once and we had a power cut, and when I loaded RetroArch back up, um, it, like, it basically reinstalled the APK for some reason, and lost all my settings. So I had to get the, take the back of the, the cab, get the keyboard out, work through everything again, which is pretty tedious as you can imagine. So now basically all I do is when I load RetroArch, I just get to load configuration and mine's the second one from the bottom. These are ones that I've, I've, I've done before that, that weren't as good, so that's the reason there's more than one. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so it's a quick RetroArch, just scroll down, push your button in your house, it's, it's really snappy and fast. Um, so like I said, yeah, these are typical um, arcade one-ups, so and these are exactly like you'd get if you bought those cabinets. So I'll just quickly load up my MVC. And you can see how fast it, it, it loads, it's, it's really snappy, okay. ready to go. Um, obviously Let's with these games well, you can play two player because it's a, it's a proper arcade one-up app. Um, there's no scan lines unfortunately because it's an older cab, but you know, again, what, what do you expect for free? <laughs> so you can't ask for the world, can you? Um, yeah, back to the credits here, just to show you two player works. So. You get the idea, it works great. So if this is an older cab, you have to hold the player one button to get out. Like that. Now obviously because this is in an arcade one path, there's no exit button to go to a dashboard that didn't theoretically exist. So if you've done the mod right, hold the live button for five seconds. And you're out and you're back back to this menu uh, so i'll just quickly load up the stock cab just so you can you, in case you're worried it's not going to work or anything like that um, and to be fair the stock cab's really good i was really pleased with it um, some really really good games on here um obviously you've got the street fighters uh, puzzle fighter Pogia, which is a great shooter uh, giga wing uh, armored warriors final fight king of dragons all really really good games um, we'll just go into hyper fighting So yeah, because this is a more modern cab, the live button is your quick button, which is much better than holding the one player. So that's pretty much it. Um, just quick correct. The um, the only like hard mods I've done to the cabinet is just the, the um, illuminate the deck. Um, as you can see here, there's a, about a five mil just get the focus. There's about a five millimeter gap, so it's easily wide enough to to run a LED strip without interfering with the control deck. Um, I've also done the coin doors. So the good thing is, is the coin door comes off, and um, what you can do is you can actually Take these red bits of plastic off, put the coin door back on so you know exactly where to drill. So you just drill through, and then with what was remaining of the LED strip, I literally just uh, taped them to the back there uh, with some electrical tape. Um, and there you go. So that cost like three quid for me, but it was really, really cheap. If you don't like the lights, they usually come with like um, a little remote, so you can just toggle them on and off. See? They just need to change the colours. But I, I tend to stick with red because it matches the theme of the cabinet. Um, so yeah, there we go. Um, the, just, the only game that, that, that didn't really work very well was um, Golden Axe and Revenge of Death Adder, um, which I know has some trouble with in May, but I have to play on this little one instead, which you can see there's, there's a, quite, a, quite a difference, isn't there? <laughs> um, but I can still play it on that little thing anyway. Um, but yeah, so other than that, that, that's it. Oops, just get rid of that. Um, hope this helps you to, to get the most out of RetroArch you know find a few, a few problems that you may have regarding the simultaneous buttons etc um thanks for watching